I mean, it's in everyone's interest that for when criminals enter this space to steal from customers or to attack Coinbase or whatever, that they experience consequences, right? Because that's how behavior changes over time, right? right? And so we do uh, work with law enforcement, not just in the US, but overseas as well, to help them better target the the, the bad guys who are targeting um, our customers and, and the industry writ large. This content is brought to you by VeChain, which is a leading enterprise-grade layer one public blockchain spearheading a digital revolution from a sustainable, highly scalable smart contract platform. The VeChain blockchain has many unique features, which makes it an ideal choice for Web3 applications. VeChain is working with many great enterprises such as PwC, Givenchy, BMW, and Walmart China. Most recently, they partnered with the Boston Consulting Group to build a revolutionary decentralized application ecosystem. I'm a big believer in this project. I have been since 2018. I've been a VET token holder for years. And this blockchain is highly scalable, uh, great with security and speed, and it has low energy consumption. If you'd like to learn more about VeChain, please visit vchain.org. Link will be in the description. Hey, everybody, I'm down at the Ripple Swell Conference in Miami, and I have Philip Martin, who's the Chief Security Officer at Coinbase. Philip, great to have you, and uh, how are you enjoying the conference so far? Yeah, happy to be here. Um, it's uh, it's a great location. Couldn't ask for better weather, Yeah, especially the week after Hurricane. Thank goodness it miss Miami, right, for right, the most right. part, or it would probably be pretty rough out there. Um, but tell us about your background. You know, I, I saw on your LinkedIn you were in the Army, and how'd you mm -hmm. end up at Coinbase? Yeah, so I've been at Coinbase for about eight and a half years, um, joined in uh, sort of the middle of 2016. And um, really ended up at Coinbase uh, because of the the fascinating security challenges that are present mm. in the crypto space, and the, the reality that you know there it's it's really really hard to to find another industry where security is so oh, yeah. critical yeah. to the success or failure of a business. As, we, as we've seen yeah. many times, many companies over the years. Oh sure, and I mean, and Coinbase being the largest U.S. exchange, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure you guys are under constant attack by whether it's hackers or whatever it may be. So what are what does your security team look like? What, what are some of your yeah. initiatives? So yeah, um, you know, as of our last 10Q, I think we the number was $269 billion worth of cryptocurrency at Coinbase. Wow. wow. Uh, and that's just custodial. That doesn't count the wallet sure. and all the other stuff, if I recall correctly. Um right. So we have, uh, as you might expect, a fairly large investment in security at Coinbase. The, mm -hmm. the security team, so I oversee cybersecurity, physical security, and, and some other stuff around uh, technology compliance and things like that. So I have about a little under 300 people in that in that overall org um, focused on security for Coinbase, which is, percentage-wise, is is much, much larger of an investment in security than most organizations make. Sure. Um, right? We're, we're we bounce between you know five and eight percent of the company by headcount. Um, wow. Just depends on you know who's hiring what, but right. like somewhere in that range is is normally where where we are. Sure. Um, in most places, you're talking like one percent, right, wow. or, or or under one percent um, is is in security, yeah. and it's not just that, right? We we really do talk about. Um, Especially in the early days, we, we 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 would make the joke that Coinbase is actually a security company that just happens to do cryptocurrency, um, right? right? Because there's such a focus from the top down uh, on on trust and on safety and on security and making the right decisions for our customers. Oh, absolutely, and and I uh, noticed that you guys have collaborated with the FBI and other. Uh, enforcement mm -hmm. uh, divisions and so forth. Tell us about that. How are you working with those? Folks? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's in everyone's interest that for when criminals enter this space mm -hmm. to steal from customers or to attack Coinbase or whatever, that they experience mm -hmm. consequences, right? Because that's how behavior changes over time, right? right? And so we do uh, work with law enforcement, not just in the US, but overseas as well, to help them better target the, the, the bad guys who are targeting um, our customers and, and the industry writ large. And this is everything from, you know, helping educate them on cryptocurrency and, the, and some of the investigative tools that are out there, as well as, you know, we see attacks that, that, that they don't because we're in a different place sure. in the ecosystem, right? And putting that information together for them in ways that makes it easier for them mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to, to, to investigate and to, to find bad guys, ultimately, hopefully to put them in jail. Yeah. And, there was a report, I don't know if there's validity to this, but it was in September that North Korean hackers were trying to 
hack uh, the custodians to Bitcoin ETFs, mm -hmm. Coinbase being the largest at this point. Uh, is there any validity to that? Have you guys noticed anything from that? So that was the FBI report that was oh, put okay. out. Um, so they, they put out sort of a, a warning and guidance to, to the industry okay. um, about uh, targeting by North Korea. And uh, look, the, the reality is, is North Korea targets crypto all the time, all the, yeah. right? This was this was not like a heavy a heavy news day um, in sure. the Coinbase security team. We're, we're well aware <laughs> that North Korea is a, a very prolific actor in this space, and 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 they target all the way from you know big exchanges like Coinbase all the way down to individuals that mm -hmm. hold crypto. Um, now, you guys are also part of the Tech Against Scams Coalition. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah. So this is a coalition we co-founded along with, um, you know, uh, uh, Meta and Match and other mm -hmm. players in, in the tech space because we saw that, you know, the things like pig butchering scams or, you know, romance scams or confidence mm -hmm. scams, they're, they're, they're obviously a huge problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one of the issues with them is they don't occur just on just one platform. Right there, you maybe right. there's maybe there's a, a a dating app match that goes into a WhatsApp conversation that goes into oh, yeah. maybe like a crypto investment scam or a, or something of that nature, right? And right. so each of us individually, that dating app, well, what they what they see is a match occurred, mm. a conversation happened a little bit, and then it was taken to a different platform, right? What is what does WhatsApp see? Not much because they're encrypted messenger, and then we see a a customer um, who is in fact themselves. It's not fraud. It's not anything like that sure giving us instructions about sending buying, buying crypto or sending it somewhere right so each mm. each piece of that individually is very hard to stand up and say like oh that is a scam yeah. but if you look right. at, at the, the pattern across all the platforms right. you can start to say like oh that's definitely a scam right mm. um and so we, we brought this group together um out of what had been a bunch of sort of you know uh, uh bilateral conversations and sharing and sharing into really a consortium where we can come together as a as a community of, of technology platforms mm. to share information to share to share you know what are called ttps tactics techniques and procedures that the bad guys use to right. scam people to coordinate on you know information sharing with law enforcement to right. really to to bring the whole picture together so we can mm. combat this more effectively as a group yeah, that absolutely makes sense. Because to your point, these things happen on multiple platforms, and they take it into DMs and all that. Uh, and it's so incredible how sophisticated it has become. Absolutely. Um, but that's great. To, that, that's a great correlation. Excuse me, coalition. Coalition. Can't say that. Um, now, I do want to talk about the dynamic between crypto and tradfi and mm. illicit activity because. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, maybe because it's new. Crypto gets the sensationalized headlines, mm -hmm. but TD Bank can do epic money laundering, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but it's like business as usual. Correct. What is your take on that dynamic? I mean, it's not just TD Bank, right? Like yeah. you go back, Wells Fargo had a very similar yeah. settlement a few years back. It's just, it's just, unfortunately, in TradFi, it seems to be the cost of doing business yeah. for these for these large banks. Um, it seems crazy to say that a three billion dollar fine is cost to do right. business, but um, but but that's just the reality. I think it's fascinating that um, you know crypto, obviously, you know, call it twelve years old. Well, Coinbase is twelve years old. Crypto would be fifteen or so at this point if we go back to the original white paper. Sure. Um, much much newer than the traditional financial system, um, which which is still the criminal sort of tool of choice when they when you talk about moving. Um, you know, illicit uh, uh, funds from, you know, gained from that activity, right. moving it around, using other places. It's predominantly done in cash. The mm. fascinating thing to me is, you know, we released an illicit finance activity report, uh, what it was, two months ago or so, where we could put a number on, on the percentage. It was like, I want to I call it point. 0.3 or something percent mm. of transactions were, were in some way related to illicit activity. Sure. The fact of the matter is you can't actually do that same thing for the traditional economy oh, for the, yeah. for, 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 no, the, for dollar based, like you can take guesses, but you don't know, there's no blockchain. There's no record right. of these transactions. You have no idea what, what, what you're actually seeing because you're seeing a tiny piece of it based on wherever you're coming from. Sure. So to me, that's, uh, that's a fascinating um, benefit actually of crypto that we can say right. with like a reasonable level of confidence what the illicit activity is in crypto what percentage is and over time we can measure it and if we can measure it we can we can try to drive it down right right in a way that you can't with a dollar yeah i mean philip i could just give you a suitcase of money right under right. the table here uh -huh. and nobody would know <laughs> right 
And then, yeah. you know, there's there's the other fun thing is that is that criminals have spent a long time figuring out ways to then take that suitcase of cash and get it back into the financial system, right? right. Through money laundering, right. through all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, it's a very well developed skill. Right. Right. And much more so than in the, the blockchain space. Yeah. Where there's there's no such thing as, as a suitcase of cash. You could certainly send me money on the blockchain, but like right. Everyone sees it, that. Every, yeah. it's, it's it's all there, there. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's to me it's it's a fascinating dynamic. Mm. Yeah, and I wonder if it's sometimes I wonder you know it's just maybe the people who don't like crypto they sensationalize mm -hmm. things and they try to you know amp it up and make it look like it's bigger than it is. But I guess as companies like Chainalysis and these folks come out and put out and and you guys as well mm -hmm. like reports on these things, they help educate the public, educate lawmakers, and so forth. Like it's all here, man. It's very yeah. important. And, and I mean, you, all you have to do is ask a, a law enforcement agent, hey, right. would you rather run a money laundering investigation in, in, the, in the traditional world with right. shell companies and, and international transactions or whatever else, or would you rather run it on the blockchain? Right. And, and they will largely tell you on the blockchain. Mm. It's much, much, much easier. And especially you know, traditional money laundering, you start going between countries, it just becomes impossible. Yeah. So, so, so hard for law enforcement to walk that back. Oh yeah. So are you guys doing, and I apologize if I, if I missed this cause I am a user of the Coinbase uh, platform. Thanks for being a customer. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you guys doing like any educational awareness campaigns? Like mm -hmm. I'm going to give you five Satoshis to go through this security check to make sure you, you watch out for phishing scams. You watch mm -hmm. out for people asking you to send them crypto or do whatever. So we haven't done that yet. Although, okay. although it's an idea we're very, very interested in. Oh, sure. Um, we do do a lot of uh, of outreach in general, both in app and um, in more, you know, through through blogs. And mm -hmm. we did a uh, a video recently that was aimed at at, at pig butchering, um, okay, sort yeah. of explaining the process and helping helping educate potential victims. Um, sure. Uh, we did a, and, and I would say just a quick, quick plug here. It's, it's on our YouTube channel. It's, right. it, it's up there for people to see your audience probably doesn't need to see it is my guess, Yeah. but I bet your audience, every single person out there knows someone who does, does Yeah. right. A parent, uh, a yeah. friend, uh, a, a whatever. Sure. Right. And it's so important for those of us who, who, who know about this stuff hmm. to educate potential victims, because that truly is the silver bullet right. for preventing the stuff. Yeah, spot on. Because I think to your point, most of the folks who are here are maybe considered early adopters and mm -hmm. they're a little more tech savvy. But I definitely have family members who are like, what is this? I do want to in invest, but I'm kind of scared. Yep. 24 phrase, seed phrase. I'm scared yep. of that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So There's they need the education. On, yeah. For sure. They, yeah. they really, really do. And so we see that as a, as a really important piece of our place in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is when we see these, these bull runs that we're hopefully about to see another one of, I'm knocking. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's probably a wood product. Yeah. Um, knocking on wood there, uh, Coinbase sees a large number of new, brand new to crypto people coming in for the first sure, time, right? Yeah. Um, and that's great. And like we we love the fact that that we have that level of trust and approachability and ease of use. Right. But it's also very important that we educate those people as they yeah. enter into the crypto ecosystem right. on like how is this different from your Facebook account. How is this different from even your traditional bank accounts, right. right? And how how are attackers acting in the ecosystem? What do you need to be worried about? What do you need to be aware of? Um, right. So 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 important that they get that early mm. because that makes the scammers' job so much harder. Yeah, great point. Well, I hope you credit me with the idea by giving people <laughs> yep, some yep. stable coins, Satoshi. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what's on your roadmap? You know, what do you guys have in store for remainder twenty twenty four and maybe into Q one twenty twenty five? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too much into into like what's coming out, what kind of products are, are showing up, that kind of thing. I think you'll see us continue to focus on consumer protection, um, on making sure that mm. both both in the custodial and in the non custodial space, mm. um, with you know Coinbase Wallet, the smart wallet that we relatively recently right. rolled out, and with you know the DeFi space continuing to grow. There's there's mm. there's, a, there's a lot of work we can do there to help people again make that next jump from buying and holding on coinbase to participating in the um the on-chain economy and mm -hmm. doing so safely right? right uh and and with awareness of the risks and threats um we've done things like you know add uh this was last year but add transaction transparency to coinbase wallet so you can actually see hey you're about to sign something what what is this going to do right in mm -hmm. in terms that humans can understand without having to figure out, read through the transaction, figure out what's in there, which 
the reality is not only a small percentage of crypto users can do right. effectively. Question that just came to mind. Yeah. Are your user profiles, so let's say I have a user profile, mm-hmm. is that on chain at all or is it more like web two? Like- so, so it depends on what product you're talking about, right? Okay. So if it's Coinbase, like the, the retail, you're logging into coinbase.com, mm-hmm. right? That customer profile, that is that is a more of a web two thing. Okay. But if you have a Coinbase wallet, the app, which is self self custodial, right. you can, you know, and there you can do an like an ETH ID or, or a base name now. Right. Um, you can, you know, start to build that sort of online profile. It's okay. actually an area I'm very, very excited about for the future. Sure. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know if this comes from Coinbase or comes from others, probably, probably the answer is all of the above, sure. but is like on chain identity is uh, yeah. such an exciting area for right. me because it gets, it gets into the area of challenges with like non-authentic behavior, right? Yes. AI, deep fakes, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, one of the ways that we start, we start to approach a solution there is through like really great online identity and reputation. Yeah. Right. If I can, if I can know that, you know, this picture was, was actually signed by Philip Martin's key Mm -hmm. and that key has been, you know, I have a driver's license detached. I have a, I have a, whatever I have, I have attestations from Coinbase about my KYC and, and, and chase and whoever else. Sure. Um, then I can say, okay, that's probably a real person. Yeah. And they signed that Right. now, maybe I'm still lying about it. That's fine. But over time, as that reputation builds, it becomes okay. You know, he hasn't lied about the last ten photographs he published. This is has a higher chance of being authentic and legitimate, right? Sure. But but the base of that ecosystem is this strong identity layer right. that we just don't have today. Yeah, and I can't wait for that. Uh, and I know it's going to be a transition for many of these platforms. But mm-hmm. like as a content creator, I deal a lot with fake. Oh sure, scammers yeah, you must impersonating me, DMing people, but you know, there's no dialogue box to drop down to verify. This is Tony's yep. pro- profile. It's all verified on ETH or whatever blockchain. Yep. You know, there's nothing like that yet. And I, I, it has, it's, it's one of the elements of solving this problem. I yeah. think that, that has to come along. Yeah, for sure. Um, question, are you guys using AI in any way to help boost your security and to help you along? Oh, the way? sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, Look, AI is a technology like anything else, right? It's going to be used for good and evil. Yeah. Um, and on on the good side, actually on both sides, my my sort of take on this is AI doesn't make things better; it makes them faster mm. in general, yes. right? Yeah. So, like, uh, and it can it can sort of even the playing field to some extent, right? So, an mm. example, generative AI is a great example here about we're taking skills that used to be in the realm of like an individual expert with Photoshop you know, changing images to, to anyone who can type can generate a, a relatively convincing fake image very, very, very quickly. Right. Right. Um, on the security side, there's a lot of places where there's a benefit in making things faster and in, Mm -hmm. in leveling a playing field. Right. So you can level up a, a relatively junior employee to, Mm -hmm. to, you know, not an expert by any means, but you can give them suggestions to, Hey, like, I think you should probably look at this thing rather than that thing. Right. Um, there's a lot of areas where, you know, like suggestion recommendation engines are, are very useful in security. Sure. There are a lot of areas where, you know, security has a, a data problem, right? Where we have lots and lots of signals and alerts and things. How do sure. we find the ones that really, really matter? matter right? right. So AI can be helpful in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, AI can be helpful in, you know, finding bugs in code, yeah. things like that. So, um, we've played around with with you know bringing AI into auditing smart contracts. Oh wow! So far, it's not been great, but but, but early phases, early, very yeah. very early, right? So we've sure. we've played with things like that where we believe wow. that AI can can play a role in the future. Wow! Uh, final question here before I let you go. Um, are you seeing that hackers and scammers are using AI to try to attack you guys? I don't know if there's a way to figure that out, but I mean, it's tough, right? Like yeah. we're not, we're not as much as I would like to be fly <laughs> on the wall there. Yeah. Right. Um, we've certainly seen stories in, in, in the media and online that, um, you know, that, that say that attackers are leveraging, especially in, in scams, mm. um, are leveraging AI a lot more to make their operations more efficient. Oh, sure. Right. So instead of having a call center full of right people <laughs> doing these scams, yeah. they can, they can automate at least parts okay. of it. Right. Um, uh, so there certainly seems to be re- reporting to that effect. Mm. Philip, great stuff. And obviously you, you got 
maybe the most important job at Coinbase, protecting all those funds I don't know and about everything. That. I don't know about that, but it's certainly a fun job. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Thank you.